Despite reloading the roster, there are three main concerns for Auburn in 2024. You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. We are dapping it up this Friday with the Daryl Daprich. And don't forget to come back and check the feed later. We'll have more Daryl Daprich this Friday afternoon as well. Daryl, there are three main concerns for the Auburn Tigers in 2024. And when we've talked about it, speculated with holes in the roster, unrealistic expectations. Is the offense finally going to look like a modern college football offense? But first things first, you can't win in this league and you can't win at any level of football if you cannot rush the passer. And that falls on the defensive line. That falls on the linebackers. That falls on the defensive coordinator, obviously. And I think Auburn did a good job at revamping all of those, including the coaching staff. But is it good enough? Is it good enough? That, that's one of my big concerns for this team. Yeah, it's it's my concern, biggest concern, too. I think we're good. I think Auburn's good with the edge guys. I think Falk and McLeod and, and Crawford <clears throat> are going to absolutely bring a steady pass rush. It's going to be mm-hmm. good for Auburn. Um, I think that where you need to look at where there might be a concern is along the defensive line. If you're only counting on <coughs> – excuse me, Zach. If you're only counting on your outside guys, your edge guys – to get pressure, I think it hurts. I think, and then you have to bring linebackers and safeties. I think that anybody that's been successful in this league has been able to get pressure with their front four, or however you could, you know, scheme that up, and let your defensive backs get back there and just have a field day picking off football. So if Auburn yeah. can get back to that, and its defensive line can get pressure without having to get creative and bring other people from various places on the field. I think it'll be huge for this defense. Yeah, I think this defense is built to force opposing offenses to to play in third and long. I, I like the way that they're rangy at linebacker and can do a lot of different things in the defensive backfield. And I like the defensive line to be able to stop the run. I, and I, I would not have said that leaving spring, but now that they've revamped and they've got you know, Philip Bleedy and Isaiah Rakes to to compliment Gage Keys and Troll Carter and Jason Jones. Like I like this group up front when it when you talk about forming a wall and stopping the run on early downs. I, I like that. I just and, and how many times have we seen this before? Where it's third and long and Auburn just can't get to the opposing quarterback and it's it's so frustrating. Yep. It's the most frustrating thing in the world where you you allow three third down conversions on a single drive. Like it's just it's 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 frustrating. It's an emotional toll of, for a defense, and that that's my biggest concern. I mean, going out and getting Keyron Crawford, I think is huge. I think it's huge, and obviously Jalen McLeod is, is such a big deal for what he could potentially do this season. But in it from that interior spot, I'm just to me, I think that's that's the question. Can can one of these interior defensive linemen take a step forward? as an interior pass rush. That, that to me, is the big question. Yeah, and because what you're saying is if McLeod and Crawford and Falk have really good years rushing the quarterback, any offensive coordinator worth its salt is going to adjust and scheme to somehow, whether it's double teaming them or bring, chipping off the edge, whatever you need to do to slow that down. Then at that point, your interior line has to get some push and have to get some pressure. And it's it's exactly what you said. The most frustrating aspect besides how Auburn finished their season last year was Mm -hmm. the just insane amount of times on third and 13, third and 15, you know, that they could not get off the field. And Auburn would play really good defense the first two downs. And then you cannot do that. You cannot do that. You mentioned it. It's emotional. It It takes a toll mentally and it physically it does as well. So, that's my biggest concern. Can guys like Rakes and Bleedy and those guys get some push, get to the pass rut, get to the passer without – now, look, we know Eugene Asante, what he did against Cal, the mm-hmm. way he was brought in that gap and just that delayed blitz. Were, I, that'll still happen. And you, Durkin loves to blitz his linebackers. 
and him and Keys and Riddick and some of those guys I still think are going to have. And, uh, you know, Mayusi will have big, big roles on that. You know, I, I looked at this yesterday, yesterday afternoon show with Jake Crane. He highlighted Eugene Asante as the most important defensive player. And he, he made his case there. Of course, mine was Jalen McLeod for the reason that we're discussing right now. But it was like 54, I think, times Eugene Asante rushed the passer. I think that number will go up. But I believe, if I remember correctly, according to PFF, nine of those 54 the, for the entire season was the game against Cal. So it's interesting. Yeah. That's where that's really the only time he was asked to do that. And that was a massive part of the game plan. I wonder if that'll change. But just looking at the quarterbacks that Auburn's going to play this year, I mean, it's a good group. The, there's some solid quarterback play in the conference this year. Carson Beck on the road when they go to Georgia is going to be a big deal. Jalen Milrow on the road in the Iron Bowl is going to be a big deal. They don't have to play Quinn Ewers or Jackson Dart, which is which is nice. Brady Cook is a guy who has quietly become a really solid SEC quarterback. On the road. Yeah, on the road. <laughs> all, all the good ones seem to be on the road, which is interesting. Uh, I mean, the best of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Jackson Arnold, um, Oklahoma's quarterback. We'll see how comfortable he is. He's a new starter with a new offensive line. We'll see, but he's talented. There's no question about it. Then, you know, Brock Vandergriff, we'll see. Auburn fans have wanted him for forever. We'll see how that translates to, to him at Kentucky, but – if you don't rush the passer, especially with some of those guys that can move and use their feet, like it's just going to be a problem. It's just going to be a problem. You, there's one you left out there that I'm itching, itching to see Auburn play and get a ton of pressure on, and that's Vanderbilt's quarterback. Mm. Pavia. I'm telling you what. You Assuming it is him. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know why he would go there or they would get him if they didn't think he was going to be the dude. But yeah. I think you talk about anticipation – and get it because Auburn did not get really good pressure on him. Oh, if you're they right. Did, he escaped, right. and uh, there's just a lot of a storyline there that I hope there's retribution where Auburn can sack him and make him look ordinary at Jordan Hare. It's it could be a little payback, but yeah, there's a lot of quarterbacks. I mean, I don't even know who Arkansas will start. Uh, I'm just being honest. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know the the Cal kid. I expect to be the freshman that mm -hmm. alternated with Sam Jackson last year in in Berkeley when Auburn played. So. You're right, and, and the majority of the quarterbacks that are the best that Auburn has to face are is on the road, right? Um, right. If you get to them, it can make. And, a and, and what do they always say? Defense travels. Like, well, let's see. Yeah, let's see if defense can travel for sure, for sure. So yeah, I, I think uh, I think pass rush is is going to be it's a big question. That at least like there's there's folks on the roster where you could see it coming together. Like you could see all if all these guys stay healthy, if I'm guaranteed a hundred percent health across the board, I feel great. I feel great about it. Uh, but it's like can, can, who can take that next step? Is it Keldrick Falk? Is it one of these, you know, deep interior defensive linemen that have been playing college football for the last four or five years? Can they take a step forward? I, I don't know, but it's gotta be somebody. It's got to be somebody. So it speaks volumes, though, Zach, mm -hmm. about how well our secondary has played the last two years. Think about that. Think of how well the secondary's played without sure. a legitimate good pass rush and being on an island and having all time to throw, having all all day to throw. No, no question. No, qu that's why they keep getting drafted. Drafted. Yep. Can Auburn finally have a respectable offense in 2024? They've done enough to make it happen. We'll see. Uh, we'll discuss that in just a moment. Right here, unlocked on Auburn. Daryl, can you imagine needing a part for your car, truck, SUV, whatever it is, and not ordering said part that you need from eBay Motors? Can you imagine that? I cannot imagine that. And my imagination has taken me to a different place. I always talk about getting it for work vehicles. And then Lindsay pops on here and talks about getting parts for his Jeep Wrangler, mm -hmm. which I also happen to own. Mm -hmm. a Jeep Wrangler. So I thought, hmm, interesting. It's fairly new. I haven't had to do that yet. So he sparked my my mind there. So I can't wait to use it personally as well in my personal vehicle. Well, you know, and, and I've done this with mine. I've got a Toyota Corolla and I just put it on there, the year, the make, the model. And then it's like, here's everything you need. And you could just search from your own kind of thing that everything's guaranteed to fit your part. It's the eBay guaranteed fit. Your part's guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. So keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to you as customers. How many times have we said, okay, Auburn on offense, 
they're going to take that step forward. And we've seen glimpses of it, but really since 2017, the offense has been remarkably inconsistent and frustrating at times, especially when you see at other places throughout the SEC or throughout college football where they hire an offensive coach or they add a talented quarterback and everything just changes. Everything just changes, and it's like a scheme built around a quarterback, and it just it looks easy. And it's like, why do we make offense look so hard? And I mean, it even looked like that last year with what I think was self-sabotage with the, the, the dual quarterback system crap that we tried a year ago. Until I see a competent offense on the field, I'm going to be concerned because Auburn has had plenty of opportunities to field a competent offense, and it just hasn't happened. It should this year. It should, and I know there's so much of the Auburn fan base that hates on Peyton Thorne. I think Peyton Thorne's fine. I don't think he's great, but I think he's solid, and they added all these pieces around him. We get to, we're finally going to get to see this Hugh Freeze offensive scheme come to Jordan-Hare Stadium. But until they do it, Daryl, it's going to be a little bit of a concern for me. And the only reason why this question is being raised, can Auburn have a respectable offense, is contingent upon can they have a decent passing game. I think we know what we have in the running backs and the offensive line that sure. even if, if, if Auburn's offensive attack is just average, Auburn can have a respectable offense because of how good I think the running back room could be. Okay. So that's the first piece. The second piece is, what's this going to look like? Can Auburn have a respectable offense with Hugh Freeze being the primary play caller for every game? I think that changes it too. I think that's going to be the reason why it absolutely will have a respectable offense. Actually, I am predicting that Auburn will have a good offense. I think they what will have a good eight uh, top eight in the SEC. Yes, yes. I think they'll be in the top eight in the SEC, and I think y it'll be in yards, yards in per game, in yards per game, wow. and and some points. I think they'll score more points as well. Yeah, usually, there's and I correlation. Think well, I mean, if, yeah, unless yeah, you suffer in the red zone, there's not. Point. I mean, and that's good happened. Point. So I want to see. I think you'll see a a marked improvement in the Auburn's offense. Even if they get to eighth or seventh, you'll be able to tangibly see, wow, that looks a lot better. If Auburn is top eight in yards per game on offense, I mean, I think eight and four is extremely obtainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I think it puts you in a situation where like, okay, you win the games you're supposed to, your Cows, your Arkansas, your Vandys, and that puts you, so that's at six. And then that puts you in a situation where, okay, can you beat Oklahoma? Can you beat Kentucky? Can you beat Texas A&M? It's like you beat two out of those three with a top eight offense, and we think the defense is going to be pretty good this year as a whole. Yeah, I mean, you, you're in a good spot. You're in a good spot if that were to happen. You could steal one. First of all, you would beat Oklahoma based upon not stealing one. I've seen the. I've seen all the – the projections and the you know the overs and all that and Oklahoma is at seven and a half wins just like Auburn is. Mm -hmm. So now I'm really feeling good about that game. That that game's in Jordan Hare and it's an equal type money line thing. I think if you get to the top eight uh in, in offense and have the kind of defense that Auburn's supposed to have, I think you also steal one or two that you're not supposed to win. And eight and four maybe. becomes nine and three. I mean I, I think that's mm, maybe that's possible. I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know. the and I mean, I, I want people to understand that we're not asking for a lot. Like, we're not asking for Peyton Thorne to make a dark horse Heisman run here. No. Like, what we're asking for is very reasonable and very manageable. And to be honest, like, if if Hugh Freeze is the offensive minded coach that we think he is, we should get that. It's one of the big reasons why you hired him is you hired him for recruiting to rebuild your roster and your program, and because he's good at making offenses score points and get yards and, and all of that. So uh, there's so many folks that watch this show where we talk about you know the potential outcome for this team, and they want to say, oh my gosh, here they are talking up Peyton Thorne again. It's like, we're really not. We're asking him to be average. We're asking for an average SEC quarterback performance out of Peyton Thorne. And we've seen him do that. We've seen him do that before. I mean, we saw him be average I think, you know, against Alabama at the end of the year. We saw him be well above average when what he what he did at Michigan State. So to me, to me, I I think he could be good enough to do that. I don't think he's gonna carry Auburn to a 10 win season. I don't think that's gonna happen. Good. 
could. Not banking on it, but it could. But if he's a top, if Auburn has a top eight, a top half offense in the SEC, I, I think Auburn goes eight and four or better. I think I think that Peyton Thorne, uh, when people talk about his effectiveness and talking him up, we also need to understand that it's not just about throwing the football. I think sure. he's got an intangible about running the football that's very underrated. And I'm going to say this right now. Auburn's not in that Alabama game without the way Peyton Thorne ran the football. I get took yeah. a freaking beating and was tough as nails mm-hmm. and got first downs when he needed to get first downs and made the right reads to the running back. So, you know, if he throws in a repertoire of being able to throw the football effectively because he's got better receivers now and keeps the running threat, Peyton Thorne can be above average. I, I mean, we don't need him to be solid. I, I use the word solid rather than average. It's just wordplay. But let's just say he's solid. and he I, I see solid a little bit above average. Okay, good. Then I think he can be solid. That's okay. a great point. Then I think he can be solid when you mix in his legs. And and I and I do believe this. People will say, hey, we're not asking Peyton Thorne to go out and win us a game. We're just asking him not to lose a game. I think at some point during the year, if you want to go above the high water mark that you're projected to be and get to the ceiling, he's going to have to win you a game or two late. It's just now, is he capable of that? We'll see. But to steal one, he's going to have to win you one. If yeah. he doesn't, you can win eight games and just status quo. There's also the aspect, and you correctly said, you know, if Auburn's going to have a, a successful modern college football offense, the passing game is going to be important. And a big part of the passing game is there's going to be some some 18 year old kids that you need to play like juniors and seniors. And we expect that out of Cam Coleman. Can we get that out of Perry Thompson? You know, are Bryce Kane and Malcolm Simmons going to be a part of the plan this year? I, I don't know. My gut says no, but they have the talent to do it if they put it all together. I think this coaching staff will give them the opportunity to. But, you know, how quickly can you bring Perry Thompson along? And can Cam Coleman really be a number one SEC wide receiver as a freshman? I think he can, but it's still like until he does it, we don't fully know that, I guess. That's why I feel like Robert Lewis is so important, and that came right out of Cam Coleman's mouth. Mm -hmm. He didn't hesitate when you asked him in a previous interview, "Who's the leader?" and who who do I mean? Robert Lewis's name came up consistently. I think Robert Lewis is not just going to be a placeholder. I think he's going to contribute statistically significantly, and he's also going to be a guy that there's some tangibles that you can't quantify with his leadership. I, I really believe that he is going to emerge as a tremendous receiving threat and could until Coleman and Thompson or those guys find their footing, be your number one dude. Yeah. Yeah. Unrealistic, unrealistic expectations. Uh, That's, that's the third big issue. We discuss what that looks like and what that means in just a moment right here on locked on Auburn. Daryl, can you imagine, can you imagine wagering on sports anywhere other than FanDuel? No, could not do it. Can't imagine if I, it. If I see a line at any other sports book, I don't care unless it's a line produced by our friends at FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much. The summer, summer's great, but there are less sports in the summer than any other time. And FanDuel gets that. And so right now, this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers. Yes, that means you. With a boost or a bonus, you're probably thinking once a week, Daryl, right? Once a week? No, yeah. daily, Ooh. daily, daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash locked on and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball and the Locked On Podcast Network. Unrealistic expectations. And so, Daryl, when we were making this list, you actually blurted this one out. You mm-hmm. couldn't wait to share this one. Yep. And I mean, it seems like this is something that comes up um, throughout a lot of Auburn or through a lot of fan bases, but the Auburn fan base in particular. So I'm going to let you take the lead on this one. I feel like Auburn's been through the wilderness too much lately. Okay. That any organization, any thing that when they want to be successful, I feel like there needs to be cohesion, unity, and everybody on the same page. And people may not think that a fractured fan base or unrealistic expectations that create dysfunction matters, but it does. You go all the way back to when there was that coup with Kevin Steele and Gus Malzahn and then the Harson era. 
Auburn's yeah. just had bad luck when it comes to its fan base all being on the same page, kind of with one vision, one direction. Let's all pull the same direction, okay? okay. Auburn has an opportunity with Hugh Freeze and the way he's recruiting and the, you know, the, the buzz around the program to be there and get there. But it can't be unrealistic. You cannot start to get dis, discouraged and disengaged because you go, oh, this is year two. He better win 10 games. Mm -hmm. I want to see him competing for the college football playoff. Unrealistic, expectation, unrealistic expectations can fracture a fan base. And if you don't think that stuff trickles down to apathy, yeah, they tune out that noise. The team does. But it's much better. It, it's it's just – I just go back to that night in Jordan-Hare when it was 26 degrees against two, three, and six football teams. And 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 the, the unity and the camaraderie, what that did to lift yeah. the elevation of that football program. I want Auburn fans to be realistic – and say, look, if Auburn wins eight games this year and wins their bowl game, be happy with that, move on to the next phase, and start competing for championships. I'm not saying settle. I'm just mm -hmm. saying let's be realistic so that we're all on the same page and that the support is there. Because support now, Zach, is more important than ever because guess what support equates to? NIL and contributions Money. to On to right. Victory. Yeah. And you want that. That's why I don't want there to be dissing – you know, people getting disingenuous or being upset and go, well, I'm just not going to, not going to, I'm not going to donate. They're not doing what I think they're going to do. It's all important to, uh, from a support standpoint. Yeah. The, I don't, I, I've seen like most of the fan base, it seems like most people are saying eight and four or nine and three. And like, I don't know if you should expect nine and three going into the season. If you want to expect eight and four, like that's a half a game better than what Vegas is saying. So I'm a little more okay with that one. But I think most folks that I talk to have pretty reasonable expectations. Now, there are folks that think 10 and 2. There are folks that say Auburn's going to stink and go 4 and 8, which, you know, I, I, I'd love to hear the argument for that. But I've seen more unity amongst the fan base right now than I have in previous years. Maybe that's a sign of things to come. I have seen it divided on the recruiting front a little bit, but I think that's a lot of knee-jerk reaction stuff. I mean, heck, I recorded a show with a knee-jerk reaction earlier this week. So uh, may maybe that's just part of what I'm seeing through through my perspective, Daryl, but I'm seeing a lot more folks kind of be realistic and say, like, okay, yeah, like we're probably not going to win the SEC this year, but, man, we're on our way. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I feel like if Auburn wins eight games, you know, goes four and four in the SEC, is right there in the middle of the pack, gets a nice New Year's Day bowl game, not a yep. New Year's Six, but a Citrus Bowl, Outback Bowl, that kind of thing. Well, that'd be great. And wins that game and propels itself into next year at nine and four with the kind of recruiting class that Auburn has the potential yeah, to bring back in. to back top eight recruiting classes. Yeah. Nine and four. That should get you ranked. It's always good to have that little number next to your name at the end of the year when you're going into the mm -hmm. offseason. I think all that and nine and four in this conference would have you ranked in the top 20. I think that especially, all that, especially if your three losses are Bama, oh, Georgia, and Missouri. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, so yeah, I think that's why it matters. I think that's why people need to be realistic. Now, do people need to settle for mediocrity? Absolutely not. It's not in my DNA. And mm -hmm. if Auburn goes out and goes six and seven again this year, to be quite honest with you, I'll be pissed. I think that's I, I'll be upset. Now, that, that's not unrealistic. I think oh, that's a that's yeah. a drop, right? Yeah. If, if they go eight and four, you don't go. Oh, they're eight and four. They're not competing for a college. I think the answer moderation, baby. The answer lies somewhere in the middle. When you said there's people that think they're going to go four and eight, and there's people that think they're going to go ten and two, I'm like, get a little bit. I mean, I'm not even upset. I mean, I would be a little disappointed if Auburn went seven and five. But if they won that bowl game and went eight and five, that's a two game improvement over the previous yeah. year. That's how I gauge things. But then mm -hmm. next year, with these two back-to-back -back recruiting classes, I would expect another step to be taken. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So all in all, those are our three, I guess, largest concerns for 2024. Can Auburn's pass rush be good enough? Can Auburn have a respectable offense? And our expectations going to play a part. What is your biggest concern? the 2024 season let us know in the comments down below or on social media daryl how can people check out everything you've got going on socials dap 6410 instagram daryl dap 
Wednesdays and Fridays with you, my guy. Yes, yes. Please like the video. Please subscribe and come back to this feed or this YouTube channel later in the day. We are now dropping new shows on YouTube at 4 p.m. Central every weekday afternoon, and they're dropping on audio at around 3 o'clock in the afternoon Central time. So little, uh, little double dip, double dose uh, of Locked on Auburn every day. Uh, let us know what you think. Let us know what you think. So like the video, subscribe. We'll be back soon. This has been Locked on Auburn.